Genesis has really been on a roll lately. For 2021, we got a refreshed G90, an all new G80 sedan. For 2022, the G70 sedan is getting a minor refresh. And we have an all new crossover or SUV, whatever you want to call the GV80. This is the first crossover or SUV in the Genesis lineup. And I think this is going to be the best selling Genesis in America. Shortly after the GV80, it looks like we're gonna be getting a GV70. So if you're looking at this video and you think to yourself, I want something that's a little bit smaller and a little bit less expensive, stay tuned because Genesis will likely have a model for you very soon. Although obviously they're not officially talking about that just yet, but there are some spy shots wandering around if you wanna Google those for yourself. Some of you may recall that I recently had a GV80 in my driveway. Unfortunately, it was only ever in my driveway. I wasn't allowed to drive that vehicle out on public roads. But I am allowed to drive this one because this is a production GV80, not a pre-production model like that previous model was. Since then, Genesis has firmed things up a little bit in their options packaging. So we know that, for instance, the seven passenger version of the GV80, the three row model, will only be available with a 3.5 liter V6 and only in one particular trim level. But aside from that, just about everything else about the GV80 has remained the same, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on the exterior design. But I will say that this reminds me an awful lot of the Bentley SUV, I have to say. We have this large and bold grille up front. We have these quad headlamp modules, which are definitely distinctive. There are also some turn signals integrated right there into these headlamp modules. You'll find the radar adaptive cruise control sensor down there at the bottom of the bumper. Let me know what you think about this look down there in the comment section below. This is certainly less controversial in my mind, at least, than the big Superman style grill that we find in the G90. That one has a much more definite point and much more angular bottom to the grill. Genesis wouldn't talk about which competitive vehicles they were targeting with the GV80, but I think it's pretty easy to see that they're targeting the BMW X5 very directly, because this is almost exactly the same size as a BMW X5. And like the BMW, this is available as a two-row or three-row vehicle. And yet again, like the BMW X5, most of the GV80s you'll find on the dealer lots are going to be two rows. Three row options are very, very limited, just like we see in the BMW X5 at the moment. Now, obviously they're also targeting the Lexus RX lineup because Lexus and Genesis definitely seem to see a lot of cross shop lately. But unlike the Lexus RX, this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. And that's why it has the proportion that you see here on your screen, very much like a GLE or a BMW X5 and very unlike that Lexus RX. We also have a slightly more upright styling in the back, which enables that third row functionality. So even though this has a teeny tiny third row, which we're gonna talk about later in the video, it's certainly more accommodating than the third row available in the RX. The double stripe lighting theme continues from the headlamps to the side turn signals, and then right back here to the red turn signals in the back. These are full LED modules. They have a slightly reflective section in the middle to give you a little bit of a mirrored appearance. Dual exhaust tips happen down at the bottom, and we have a very similar shape to the grille up front. For 2021, the GV80 is going to be offered with three different engines around the world, but only two of them are making their way to America. The two and a half liter four cylinder turbocharged engine is going to be the base engine that produces 300 horsepower. Keep in mind the GV80 is a little bit heavier than some of the competition, so even though we get a bit more horsepower than we find in some of the entries from Europe, it's not going to be quite as fast as all of them. Then we have this optional 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. This produces 375 horsepower, and this is the model that's going to be performance equivalent to the six cylinder turbo. That we find in the BMW X5. Both engines are mated to a standard eight-speed automatic transmission. Rear wheel drive is available only with the two and a half liter turbo, which is interesting. If you get the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, all wheel drive becomes standard. The one thing that surprised me with the new Genesis engine lineup is that fuel economy still lags behind some of the European competition. So if you're looking for the most efficient entries in this segment, you might want to be looking at the BMW or the Mercedes, but they're going to cost you thousands of dollars more. And it really is going to take you several hundred thousand miles before you eat up the difference in fuel costs. But keep in mind, the Genesis models are not going to be quite as efficient as some of the competition. Ever since the Genesis brand first launched, they've been laser focused on value. And one of the ways they get there is by limiting customization and limiting standalone options. In fact, there is only one option package on the GV80 and you'll find that only in the mid-level trim of the GV80 with the 3.5 liter V6. Aside from that, there are three different trim levels of the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, three different trim levels of the V6 option. That's quite different than the European competition or even the Lexus RX, which have a ton of standalone options. That makes the value proposition a little bit easier to maintain in the GV80 because it keeps inventory streamlined. But it does mean that if, for instance, you wanted a GV80 and you wanted the 3D instrument cluster, but you didn't want the V6 engine, that's not an option for you. You have to get the specific option package where that particular feature is offered. On the other hand, Genesis offers a ton of standard equipment on the GV80, like a ton of standard driver assistance technologies and a ton of active safety technologies. You'll see the entire 
laundry list on the side of your screen. Most of these features are optional in the bulk of the European competition, but they're standard in the GV80, and some of these features are not offered in the competition at all. Bearing in mind that I'm driving the top end trim of the GV80, I give these front seats 9 out of 10 points. But I think the front seats are a good illustration of how Genesis gets to their aggressive pricing. You'll notice that we don't have a three position memory for the driver, it's a two position memory over there on the door. Three position seems to be a little bit more common in the European competition. And even though we have a very adjustable driver's seat here with an inflatable side cushion, four way adjustable lumbar support, a massage feature, extending thigh cushion, etc. This seat is not quite as adjustable as some of the European competition, and the front passenger seat does not have the same range of motion as the driver's seat. It's lacking the extending thigh cushion, it's lacking the inflatable bolsters, etc. It's also lacking the massage functionality. This might be a reason for some folks to take the GV80 off your shopping list if you're frequently in the vehicle with your spouse, but honestly, most people are commuting alone, so it does make sense when it comes to the value proposition. The massage functionality in these seats is a bit more similar to the Lincoln or BMW anti-fatigue seats, a little bit less like the Volvo or Mercedes active massage functionality. We have air bladders in the seat bottom and seat back cushion, but they don't go as high up the seat back cushion, and it doesn't have as aggressive of kneading functionality as we find in the Volvo or the Mercedes, or of course some Audi. Hopping back into the second row, legroom is definitely very generous. This front seat's adjusted for me at six feet tall. I still have about six or seven inches of legroom left. Since I'm driving the top end trim of GV80, I have a power second row, so it power slides forward. We also have a powered recline right there. The recline is pretty aggressive for a two row luxury crossover. It's a pretty comfortable back seat. In this trim, rear passengers get powered window shades. There also are manual shades available in the GV80. We also get a dual pane moonroof and vanity mirrors right back here for the rear passengers. A touch that was seen in Genesis models for a while, you can control the front passenger seat from back here in the second row, so that way you can move it out of the way if you want a little bit more leg room. And then right here in the center console, we have a three zone automatic climate control system. This is a little bit different than most of the European competition, which seems to offer four zone automatic climate control. We have some USB charge only ports down there and then a 120 volt inverter. Since this is one of the top end trims, the rear seats are both heated and ventilated, but again, we just have that three zone climate control system. As expected, the GV80 offers a teeny tiny third row, what I would call an emergency third row. It's about as spacious as the one that we find in the BMW X5, definitely more accommodating than the one in the Lexus RXL. This second row seat is relatively comfortably adjusted for me at six feet tall. My knees are just about touching the back seat. And as you can see, there's not a great deal of headroom going on back here. But if you had to, you could squeeze two adults back here in a pinch. Uh, let's see if Sofin wants to hop back here and take a look and see how it fits for him. Width is not the problem. There's definitely enough width for two adults back here. Okay. And the okay. third row is powered, so I mean, like, I can recline Ooh. or make it less comfortable, I guess. But hey, you're you're not bad. You know, my head's already touching the ceiling. Already touching the ceiling. I'm shorter than you by a considerable margin. Kids shouldn't have a problem though. Yeah, but this is more space than the Lexus RX. That's true. Sure. Yeah, this is best reserved for naughty kids or your mother-in-law. <laughs> Behind the power hatch, we find just over 33 cubic feet of storage space. This is definitely a larger cargo area than we find in the Lexus RX or the Lexus RXL. Because of the styling in the RX and the fact that it wasn't initially designed for a third row. The cargo area is pretty cramped. It definitely has a very raked appearance right here in this area, and that limits cargo capacity. The GV80, on the other hand, was designed to accommodate that tiny emergency third row, very much like the BMW X5. So like the BMW X5, this cargo area is pretty spacious. In a practical touch, the rear seats fold in a 40-20-40 fashion. You'll notice that they're not quite at the same level. That's because this particular model has the optional power reclining second row seats. Under the load floor, there's a handy place where you can store your roller cargo cover. That's a very nice touch. And then if we go further under, you'll notice we have some additional storage space under the floor. You can also get a compact spare tire if you prefer. As we look around the interior, keep in mind that I am driving the top end version today. You'll find a sunglass holder right here, touch controls for the map lights, there's a little bit of cross hatching right there in these plastic areas and in that dome light area, helping tie it in with the upholstery in the vehicle a bit more. You'll find the controls for the telematic system and the sunroof in this module as well. This particular model has the faux suede headliner. You can see that we also have this dual pane moonroof that I mentioned earlier. One pane right there over the driver and front passenger's heads. That second pane for the second row. You see those vanity mirrors right back there for the second row. We also have height adjustable shoulder belts. The driver and front passenger get two-way adjustable headrests. This particular model has the optional Nappa leather upholstery, which means we also get some additional piping right here that helps dress things up a little bit. These seats are both heated and ventilated. We have pretty aggressive bolstering on the seat back cushion, but the bolstering on the seat bottom cushion is fairly minor. 
As you'd expect out of a modern luxury vehicle trying to compete with BMW and Mercedes, the entire front door is made from soft touch materials, stitched leather, or real wood trim, depending on where you're looking. The only hard plastics you'll find actually are right down there at the bottom of the door inside that bottle and storage cubby, just like we find in most of the competition. The rest of that around the speaker grills, etc. that's all a soft touch material. There are a number of different wood options available in the GV80, but they're all tied to the interior color. So for instance, you could not get this particular interior combination which is sort of a light chestnut and navy blue with lighter wood you have to get the wood that you're seeing right here if we move on over to the dashboard you'll notice that the dashboard styling is a little bit different than the g80 sedan so we don't have that long strip of wood right there that we do find in the g80 but we do have basically the same infotainment screen right here in the middle of the dashboard it's a very very large infotainment screen it features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, and as you can see, that integration occupies most of the screen, but not the entire screen. There's always going to be a small portion over here on this side that's used for something else. Even though this is set a little far from the driver and front passenger, it is a touch screen, so if you prefer to touch the screen rather than use the controller, you can do that. There's also a rotary controller in the center console. The native software interface is a little bit different than some of the other Genesis models that we find, like the G70, or actually the G80, really. I find the home screen to be an attractive and unique feature in this system. We have the exterior temperature, infotainment status there, a background image that rotates around, and then a subtle mapping display pulled from the navigation system in the car. If, for instance, we go over to the map interface, you'll notice that we have a pretty typical mapping interface, pretty basically the same as we find in the rest of the Genesis lineup. No Google satellite imagery there at all. Genesis opted for a very flat software design, so we scroll through the homepage here for the various different options. That does make things a lot easier to find than the nested setup that we find, for instance, in the latest BMW and Mercedes product lineup. Uh, there's a seat option right here, so you can control these second row seats from here. If you had a third row seat, you could also do that. It's a passenger seat control, so you can actually control the seat from the driver's side as well. There's a passenger talk intercom option, which is kind of an interesting option for a relatively small vehicle. This is not as big as some of those other Hyundai products that have that particular option. Moving down from there, we find the stitch dashboard again in that navy blue color, two air vents right there in the middle, the engine start stop button tucked right there behind the steering wheel, the controls for the three zone automatic climate control system, you can control the third zone from these controls, there are also some direct access buttons for that infotainment screen. There's a lot of wood trim going on here in the center console, behind door number one we find the USB input for the infotainment system, there's also USB charging only port there, wireless charging mat, and definitely enough room for some of those larger smartphones. We have two large cup holders over here on this side with a closable wood lid. And then this is the rotary controller for that infotainment system. I don't find this quite as easy to use as the actual definite knob that we found in previous Genesis systems. You rotate this ring around. It definitely looks sexy, but sometimes I found myself accidentally clicking it when I really just wanted to rotate it around. There's some dedicated buttons here, back, home, and menu, and then roller controls for the power and volume. So just click that down for power. Behind that, we find the auto brake hold button, the gear shifter. This is a rotary style shifter. It's tempered glass, drive over there, neutral and reverse over there, and then park is that button in the middle. There's a drive mode button over here on this side, along with a button to activate the 360 degree camera system, the all wheel drive lock function, hill descent control, and a button to enable and disable the parking sensors. Between the front seats, we find a storage compartment that opens in a bifold fashion. Because this is a rear wheel drive vehicle, it's not gonna be as large or accommodating as some of the front wheel drive alternatives. Over on the driver's side, we find one of the coolest features in the G80 and GV80, that is this 3D LCD instrument cluster, but unfortunately, it is one of the hardest features to film. On camera, it definitely looks a little bit blurry or a little bit unusual. That's because of the 3D imaging here. What's going on is we have these demon eyes up top. You'll notice that these are not visible to the human eye. They're just visible to the camera, but you can actually see where they're located. These are tracking your eye movements. And the 3D display works by giving essentially the left eye one image that's ever so slightly offset from the image that the right eye is seeing. And then they use a prismatic surface in this 3D instrument cluster to make sure that the eyes are not perceiving exactly the same thing. In order for this to work, the car has to know exactly where your eyes are and where they're looking, so that way the image can continually shift around to give you that 3D impression. Trust me, it looks really cool, but it is almost impossible to film here on camera. The display style changes based on the drive mode that you're in, but it doesn't change as drastically as some of those European options. You'll also notice that we will never have Google mapping in here. We do have the status of the vehicle's active safety systems, turn-by-turn -turn navigation directions, and a trip computer, but there's no moving map display like we do find in some of the competition. But the 3D cluster is really, really cool. Unfortunately, you will find this only in the very top end version of the GV80. If you get any of the other trim levels or the 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, this display is not available. If you get those vehicles, then we get a much smaller seven inch LCD that's over here on the right side, and then a physical gauge over here on the left. 
Top end versions of the GV80 also have a new heads up display. This is a little bit different than previous Genesis models because this display is a little bit larger and it gives you a bit more information. If you look at the display from the side, you'll notice that we have what appears to be a double stacked image. But then if I look away from the display, it'll snap to a solid crisp image. That's because it's now moved to 2D mode. You can disable the 3D functionality if you want to, but you can see from the side what this looks like as it moves in and out of 3D mode. The steering wheel is a round three spoke design. I have to say I like this steering wheel design a little bit more than the one that we find in the G80. We have some sport grips up top. Let me know what you think about this design. It's grown on me. I wasn't sure about it when I first saw it, but it is a little bit different and interesting. If you get the top end trim, you get a leather wrap on the airbag cover. Unfortunately, if you get the lower end trims, then you do not get this particular airbag cover. We have paddle shifters on the back, some infotainment buttons over here on the left side. On this side, we find the controls for the Raider adaptive cruise control system, that multifunction LCD, and then a steering assist enable and disable button. This may sound negative to some, but it's really not intended this way. Every manufacturer out there has to cut corners to keep pricing in line, but sometimes manufacturers cut the wrong corners and sometimes they cut the right corners. And I think Genesis has everything just about right in this interior. For instance, a lot of European companies will make this section of the dashboard and this section over here of the door out of leather if you choose the top end leather trim option. However, Genesis makes these areas out of hard plastic, which obviously saves a little bit of money. You'll notice those touches and differences throughout the GV80. That's one of the things that gets the GV80 to its incredible value price proposition. The first thing we should do is get the numbers out of the way right up front. 0 to 60 happened in this model in 6.2 seconds. 60 back to 0 happened in 120 feet. In terms of acceleration comparisons, this is faster than the Volvo XC90 T6, but it's slower than the base BMW X5 or the XC90 T8. I have to admit that I was a little bit surprised that this 3.5 liter V6 wasn't a little bit faster because I'd expected it to be a little closer to the base engine in the BMW X5. That model will run 0 to 60 about a full second faster than this GV80. But in some ways that could make sense because I suspect that a lot of folks are going to be cross shopping this with the Lexus RX and the RX Hybrid and this is definitely faster than the Lexus model. It also has a very different feel. Again, this has a feel very similar to the European competition because this is a rear wheel drive biased cross over. And it definitely has the pep you'd expect from a twin turbo V6. I think the reason the 0 to 60 time is a little slower than the BMW is that Genesis seems to be a little bit more cautious, perhaps about delivering all the torque right up front, so the start is not quite as aggressive. There is a teeny bit more turbo lag than we find in that BMW inline 6. And most importantly, the GV80 is a little bit heavier than the BMW. You'll also notice that in the stopping distance, because there are versions of the BMW X5 or the Mercedes-Benz GLE that will stop from 60 miles an hour back to zero faster. The weight is pretty well disguised, however, because out on the road, this really has a great driving dynamic to it, whether we're in the sport mode or in the comfort mode. Now, not all versions of the GV80 are going to get the adaptive suspension system. It's really just reserved to the very top end trim. And I do think that's a pity because I was able to drive the 2.5 liter four cylinder model. It definitely had a good feel to it out on the road. Turbo lag is a little bit more noticeable in that model. Obviously, zero to 60 times are going to be a little bit longer. Unfortunately, I was not able to zero to 60 test that base model. I expect that it's probably going to be about seven tenths of a second slower than the model that I'm driving here. Torque is pretty generous out of that 2.5 liter four cylinder, as is horsepower, 300 horsepower and over 300 pound-feet of torque. I suspect that most shoppers are going to buy the 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine and it's likely that that engine is still going to be faster than comparable Lexus RX models. But back to the driving dynamics, it's really obvious that this has a rear power bias to it. Now the only version of the GV80 you can get that's actually rear wheel drive is the base model with the 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. The all-wheel drive system is optional on the 2.5 liter turbo and it's standard on this 3.5 liter turbo, but this is always going to be sending the majority of engine power to the rear axle unless there's slip back in the rear, and then it can send up to 50% of power to the front. So this is always going to have a very similar driving dynamic to the BMW X5. Genesis did not give me weight balance figures for the GV80, but I would be surprised if this wasn't very close to 50-50. It certainly feels like it out on the road. This isn't as front heavy as the Acura MDX or the Volvo XC90, or of course the Lexus. RX, it really does feel like the rest of the German competition. And obviously that would be German competition excluding something like the Audi Q8 or Q7 because those certainly have a front heavy dynamic to them as well. The GV80 certainly feels like it has the bones to be able to handle more power and handle more grip. Unfortunately, we don't see a sport package yet from the factory. So if you get the 3.5 liter V6 engine, you're going to get regular all season tires all the way around. These are 265 width tires. So they're a little bit narrower than top end trims of the BMW or the Mercedes competition. 
but remember that this is a lot less expensive. And logically, this GV80 in top end trim is competing with the very base versions of the BMW X5 and the Mercedes-Benz GLE in terms of overall pricing. I didn't mention towing capacity earlier, but let's talk about that now. It's 6,000 pounds regardless of which engine you choose and regardless of whether you choose rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. That's because towing ability isn't just about engine output, transmission, cooling, etc. It's about the entire design of the vehicle. And likely the limit is the chassis itself or the suspension design that we find in the GV80. That's a pretty decent towing capacity, however, in this segment. It certainly beats the Lexus RX, and not too many people are really towing heavy weights behind their luxury crossover anyway. When it comes to the handling score, I'm going to give this particular model an A-. Keep in mind, this is competing with other like-priced SUVs in the luxury segment. So in terms of handling ability, this is going to be very similar to similarly priced BMWs and Mercedes models. Now, you can obviously find better performing, better handling BMWs and Mercedes. Obviously, there are going to be the AMG models and the M model, etc. But as far as this compared to base engine BMW X5, I think it actually does very, very well. We don't have the grip that you'll find in some of those sport packages, however, and that's why I have to knock just a little bit off the Genesis score. I really wish that Genesis would give us something like a sport package, maybe with some slightly meatier summer tires. I think that would be an awful lot of fun out on your favorite winding mountain road. This suspension is not tuned quite as stiffly as I had expected in this 3.5 liter model. An interesting twist is that the two and a half liter model that I drove earlier today was actually a little bit firmer than this. In the top end three and a half liter model, we get the adaptive suspension system that features a sport mode and a comfort mode. Comfort mode is definitely pretty soft and you will notice that out on some of those larger road undulations that the suspension can nearly bottom out in some of those situations. Sport mode firms things up a little bit, but it's always gonna be a little bit softer than the German competition. But the two and a half liter turbo, which is gonna be the bulk of sales I suspect, is actually quite similar to the tuning that you'll experience in a base Mercedes or the base BMW. If you're looking for a more comfortable, more Lexus-like suspension tune, then you might want to step up to the top end trim that I'm driving here with the adaptive suspension. Or if you're looking for more of a European style suspension tune, you might want to get the one with the regular steel spring suspension. In my cabin noise test at 50 miles an hour, I measured 70 decibels in here that puts this half a decibel above the BMW X5, but still very quiet for the luxury segment. If you're looking for something that's quieter than this, you'll have to spend an awful lot more. What's really impressed me about the latest Genesis models is that they've spent an awful lot of time tuning the suspension, and it's really noticeable. This definitely feels like a European luxury car, very, very different than the Lexus RX, or even something like the Volvo XC90, which is a European luxury car as well, but has a very different kind of drivetrain than we find in the BMW and Mercedes competition. There's definitely a level of polish in the way the GV80 and the new G80 drive out on the road that we don't see in all the competition. And I don't really expect to see in something like the upcoming Acura MDX because it's gonna to continue to be a front wheel drive based vehicle. But the area that Genesis continues to lag a little behind the European competition is fuel economy. This particular model is rated for just one mile per gallon better than a V8 Dodge Durango. And the Dodge Durango is pretty darn big. I happen to own one. And interestingly enough, I caravaned back to the Bay Area from Los Angeles in my Dodge Durango and in this GV80. I was with Sophie and Bay from Redline Reviews. We ended up having to drive this back to the Bay Area from Southern California. So I was in my Durango. We switched seats here and there, caravaned all the way up right back to back. And this averaged just one mile per gallon more than that Dodge Durango. And the Durango has 295 with tires on it. If you're looking for a more fuel efficient entry in this segment, you will certainly find them in the hybrid options. The Lexus RX hybrid is gonna be more fuel efficient. The Volvo XC90 T8 is one of the most fuel efficient entries in this segment. And of course, there are a few plug-in hybrids and hybrids available from other manufacturers. But even outside those hybrid options, something like the base BMW X5 is going to be more fuel efficient than the model that I'm driving here. If you're wondering why the GV80 is a little bit less efficient than the European competition, I don't really have a good answer for you. This is a modern three and a half liter direct injection engine. In fact, it's a brand new engine design from Genesis. It's based largely on the outgoing 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 that we saw in other Genesis models, but it's been completely redesigned for use in the G80 and GV80. And of course the upcoming G90 and G70 at some point in their lifetime. It's possible that it could have something to do with the engine design itself, or perhaps the automatic transmission. This is an in-house designed eight-speed automatic. It's not the same ZF eight-speed that we find in most of the luxury competitors. Over a few days of mixed driving and a decent amount of steady state highway travel, I've been averaging 20.3 miles per gallon. So I'm gonna have to give this a C when it comes to fuel economy in this segment. Now that said, keep in mind that the GV80 is significantly less expensive than a lot of the competition. So if you're simply concerned about total cost of operation, remember that over its lifetime, you will be unlikely to spend as much fuel in this as the cost difference between this and a comparably equipped BMW. 
So speaking about pricing, it's clearly time to talk about how much the GV80 will cost you. Before I dive into pricing, I'd like to remind you all that there is a new Alex and Auto's merch store. It's over at AOAMerch.com. You can get t-shirts right like this one and a whole other host of new t-shirts for the fall collection. Also, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that notification button down there at the bottom of the screen. Make sure that notifications are on, even if you're already subscribed to Alex and Autos. That will make sure that you're up to date on all of my latest videos. With that out of the way, let's dive right into pricing. And I'm not going to go over pricing in too great a detail here or comparisons as I usually do, because I'm trying to get this video out to you as soon as I possibly can. I just drove the car today trying to get this video out to you tomorrow. So the base 2.5T rear wheel drive model, remember that's the only way you can get the G80 in rear wheel drive, is going to set you back $48,000. $1,900. On the options list, you'll notice that all-wheel drive appears to be a pretty expensive option. That's $54,650 for the base all-wheel drive option. That's because all-wheel drive also brings with it a number of additional features. Jumping up into the 3.5 liter V6 engine is going to cost you about $5,000. It's going to get you the extra 75 horsepower and a little bit of extra torque. But the performance difference between the 2.5 liter turbo and the 3.5 liter turbo is not as massive as base engine to optional engine in, say, for instance, the BMW X5, where there definitely is a big performance improvement. If you're interested in the third row, you'll find that only in the 3.5 liter V6 all-wheel drive with the advanced package for $65,050. That's the only version of the GV80, at least at the beginning, that will offer that third row option. Now, Genesis has said that if there's a lot of interest, they could always adjust that, but they don't see that much interest in an optional third row. I am surprised, however, that it's in that particular trim. I had expected the third row to be perhaps standard or available in one of the lower end trims, but not the top end trim. So it is a little unusual that we have it positioned exactly where it is. It's also worth noting that you can't get all the top end features that you saw in the model that I was driving today with that third row, so no 3D instrument cluster with the third row option. Now let's try and trip through the comparisons just quickly here. The BMW X5 will start at $59,400. That's for the rear wheel drive inline six model. Performance in that vehicle is actually a little bit better than the 3.5 liter V6 we find in the GV80, but all wheel drive is not standard. That will set you back $61,700. That puts the base BMW X5 right between the 3.5 liter turbo all-wheel drive in the standard package and the advanced package in the GV80 lineup. You will find relatively similar equipment in the BMW X5. As long as you're not taking a look at active safety systems, you will find more active safety technologies and driver assistance technologies standard on the GV80. The value proposition, however, really starts to come into play when you start taking a look at the model that we were driving today for $70,950 getting the amount of equipment that we had in this model in your BMW X5 would cost you significantly more than that. Depending on exactly how you have features lined up, it could be about fifteen dollars to $20,000 more. Now, admittedly, in those top-end versions of the BMW X5, handling and performance is going to be a little bit better, so definitely keep that in mind. Versus something like the Lexus RX, I was surprised that the Genesis ended up being a little bit more expensive. Again, starting at $48,900, the Lexus RX starts at $45,070. But if you start adding options, you will notice that you have options available on the Genesis GV80 that are not available in the Lexus RX. And I also think that the GV80 just looks more fresh, more modern, more interesting as well. It definitely has a very accommodating interior, a bigger cargo area in the back, and performance is significantly better if you opt for the 3.5 liter V6. On the other hand, Lexus does have a strong reputation for durability, reliability, and dependability. And according to the numbers, it seems like Lexus still has a very slight edge on Genesis in some metrics. So depending on exactly which reliability metric you're looking at, Lexus will either be a little bit better than Genesis or they're pretty much even. But if you're looking for a hybrid or better fuel economy, you'll certainly find that in the Lexus RX. Also, if you're looking for a more isolated ride or a more traditional luxury brand, clearly you'll find that in the Lexus as well. Personally, if my money were on the line, I would definitely get the GV80 over the Lexus, however. Next up, we have the Volvo XC90. That's going to be a little bit more expensive than the base version of the GV80 at $49,000 for the base T5 front-wheel drive model. Now, you can get your XC90 faster than the GV80 in any form if you get the T8 version of the XC90, and that is a plug-in hybrid, so it's also going to qualify for a tax credit. Depending on exactly which model you're looking at, that could drive that T8 model down to a little bit less than the GV80, but generally speaking, the Volvo and the Genesis are going to be very comparably priced. Driving dynamics, however, are not going to be comparable. The GV80 definitely has a strong rear wheel drive dynamic, and as much as I like the way the XC90 drives, it's not quite as much fun as the Genesis. 
I think that Volvo's 2.0-liter turbo sounds a little bit more refined than the base 2.5-liter engine that we find in the GV80. However, the GV80's V6 definitely has a more refined sound than the 4-cylinder that we find in the Volvo. And remember that the XD90 has only a 4-cylinder lineup. The Mercedes GLE starts just under $56,000, which is pretty close to the base all-wheel drive version of the GV80. And at the moment, all-wheel drive is standard on the GLE. On the surface of things, that may look like the Mercedes is going to be the better deal here because it is the more traditional brand, and I really like the way the GLE interior looks. However, you'll notice that there's a lot of optional equipment available on the GLE, and there's a lot of standard equipment on the GV80 that is optional on that Mercedes. If you get carried away with options, the GLE can get incredibly expensive. And I'm not talking about the AMG versions or the optional engines, I'm talking about the base engine in the GLE. That's something that we've seen out of Mercedes lately over the last few years, is that there are a ton of options available on even their base engine, and that can add significantly to the base price. So if you get carried away with options, keep in mind that the base engine in the GLE can get significantly more expensive than the most expensive version of the Genesis GV80. Bottom line in the GV80 I think is pretty easy. Even though it seems like we had to wait an eternity for Genesis to finally bring a crossover to the United States, the GV80 is certainly worth the wait. The design is more unique than the original Genesis models when the brand first launched in the United States. If you were worried that the original Genesis models were a little bit me too, a little bit too similar to some of the competition out there, I think the new Genesis models really have a unique styling direction. And the interior is certainly unique and premium in in the GV80. One thing that I wasn't expecting, however, is for the GV80 to feel arguably nicer and more premium in some areas than the flagship of the Genesis brand, the G90. I also wasn't expecting the new G80 sedan and the GV80 crossover to be as different as they are, because I think that the interior in the GV80 is actually a little bit nicer than the one in the G80. The one thing that has not surprised me, however, is the continual price increase that we're seeing with the Genesis branded vehicles. As I said, starting at $48,900, the GV80 is not the screaming deal that Genesis models once were, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth the price tag. And if my own money were on the line, the GV80 would sure be at the top of my shopping list. I love the BMW X5, but you'll get an awful lot more content for your dollar in the GV80. You will have to give up a little bit of performance and a little bit of handling precision in the Genesis, but you're not giving up as much as you might think. Certainly Certainly not as much as you'd give up if you ended up with a Volvo XC90 or a Lexus RX or even an Audi Q8 or Q7. Here's the best way to think about the GV80. Are there competitors out there that are better in some areas than the Genesis? Absolutely. The BMW X5 is going to be faster than the Genesis. Some models will handle better than the GV80. Uh, you're going to find some luxury features that you don't find in the GV80, like passenger seats with memory, the same functionality that we find on the driver's side. You'll find some entries in the luxury segment like the XC90 or the Mercedes options that have better front seat massage features. And of course, the passenger seat will have massage as well. But are they going to be as good of a value as the Genesis? Are they going to be as reliable as the Genesis? Probably not. And in the end, the calculation probably has to work out like this. The BMW X5 might be better, but is it ten dollars or $15,000 better? That's a question that only you can answer. So let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Be sure and find me over at facebook.com slash alexnautos, over at Instagram, all those other social places. Be sure and check out my videos on the Genesis G80 sedan. And of course, stay tuned because hopefully I'll have my hands on the GV80 with the 2.5 liter turbo very, very soon. If you want to know how I feel about that 2.5 liter turbo, you can check out the Genesis G80 video because that full drive video was on that 2.5 liter turbo. And hopefully I'll be able to get the V6 in that model also very soon. I'll see all of you later.